What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It has been a minute since I've been on the main account and in today's video we're going to be diving into some Baldur's Gate draft. I know it's not the most exciting thing. I know some people aren't a big fan of alchemy but it's something that I from what I've watched and kind of seen other people do in draft. It does seem like an interesting draft format as a whole. Um, there is a little bit of a spoiler if you're not paying attention uh, you may not see it but there is a little bit of a spoiler on the screen if you caught it real quick. Um, but we are diving into uh, draft today, which is definitely going to be a fun thing to do on the main account if I can actually find where it is. So we'll be diving into draft today here on the main account. It is definitely something I've been wanting to do overall in MTG Arena since it got released. But I was in the middle of doing the free to play challenge and it was definitely difficult to do both main account stuff and free to play account stuff. So I just focused on free to play account stuff just because I wanted to make sure I had those videos for you guys on the daily when I was doing them. But we're going to be diving into draft today in, in arena. Uh, it is Baldur's Gate. It is an alchemy set, but it does seem like it's a fun alchemy set to draft around. It does seem like a very big explosive format as a whole, just in the sense that a lot of the, the more powerful things in the, in the format are big expensive mana creatures. There are some cool things. There are some stuff that is returning. Um, overall, you know, the rewards here are definitely not that bad. You know, Premier Draft is definitely the better, I think, overall drafting uh, format once you get more comfortable with drafting, just because when you're drafting against humans, dr humans draft different than bots. Uh, the other thing, too, is you don't you don't play the players that you draft with um the other and on top of that your prize rewards even for barely getting any wins is definitely a lot better even at zero wins you still walk away with a 50 gems and a pack and if you get yourself all the way up to 2200 gems you get uh or six or seven wins you get yourself 2200 gems and six packs um so definitely you know it's definitely one of those things you you want to strive for i would say you know getting anywhere from like three to four or four to five wins is probably the nice sweet spot of here uh five wins puts you over the amount that it would cost to actually enter into the draft uh four wins uh would give you enough gems back that you can still get three packs you have 1400 gems which then overall builds your overall currency here and that's definitely very important if you're someone who wants to be free to play and doesn't want to spend a lot of money uh getting pretty decent at drafting is definitely and especially premier draft is definitely the best way to kind of earn a big chunk of currency all at once um i did actually am recording this after i've done the draft so if you're not paying attention overall you may you may get a glimpse of how well i did or how bad i did i guess I, you know spoilers spoilers uh, so definitely one of those things. Um, but overall, you know, it's definitely a fun draft format. Uh, and I'm going to dive right into my first draft of it. I did start at bronze rank. I am now silver rank. I won't tell you what silver rank, but if you can remember what symbol represents what, we are silver now. So definitely we are silver and we did have, and we did okay. So with that being said, let's dive into the draft and kind of see how we do. All right, so for our, being our first draft, there's definitely some interesting cards here. Um, some cards that, you know, stick out to be very good cards right off the bat. Uh, there are a lot of cards that have a lot of words on it. Grave choice, our opponent sacrifices not to a creature. If that creature had mana value two or less conjure, a duplicate of it into our hand, death, the fresh gains, you spend manas. Card seems pretty decent. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be a multicolored deck. That card has a lot, you know, it, you pretty much roll a d20 and you put lands on from our hand onto the battlefield or search our library for two land cards. Two mana, double team. Double team, from what I've seen, is definitely very good. Uh, this dragon's very strong. Um, you know, Guild Sworn Prowler is also very good, too. One Death Toucher, that if it doesn't die from blocking it, you get to draw a card. Um, definitely tough to say. I don't think the rare is good. It's a land, and it, it focuses around gates, so we'd have to have a lot of gates. So I think we maybe take the Grave Choice and maybe see if black is going to be available. Uh, as we do have some decent black cards in this pack outside of that. And it's just going to be uh, what other color is going to be viable outside of black. Um, open up. Oh, we get past second pack. Dragonfire is really good. We have Kogla, Shadow, Archer. When it enters, when it attacks, it gains death touch on a turn. Mill two cards. Once turn our turns, we play lands. or cast permanent cards from among cards that were in our, that were put there. Oh, that's a lot of words. Um... It's definitely tough, right? Because, you know, Gut seems decent. When it enters the battlefield, tap up to one target creature you control, fight target creature you don't control. If the creature you don't control would die, exile instead. Um, and then it flips over. Holy crap. And it costs a ton of mana. Um, hmm. I think we take the dr dragon fire is really good removal. I think we take the dragon's fire and we kind of maybe go red black. I don't know if Rakdos is any good currently, but I think red black's an okay color matchup. 
Um, so we get past a decent pack. Uh, imp improvised weaponry is not bad because you get a treasure token. Uh, if we go the route of possibly getting some cards that can control, we can sacrifice them and give this two plus two plus two. Prowler is also really good because if we attack in with it and they block, uh, we get to draw a card. If it dies from not blocking, we get to draw a card in general. Um, I think it's probably between these three. The white cards are definitely good, though we're not really looking at white at the moment. Uh, I think we take the Prowler just because it's a solid, aggressive choice uh, being in two mana. And we already have two technical removal cards, so it's definitely going to be interesting. Um, our opponent to our, our, our opponent, our player to our right has four packs that they're just kind of sitting on. So I guess they're also being very, very strategic on what they're picking. So it's definitely going to be one of those things to see kind of how the, how the table develops color wise. Uh, so we get shambling gas, we get, um, another ghoul, which is another, a, a good card. Shambling gas is definitely very good though. I would say this is something, if we get something like deadly dispute could be better. Um, it is a one drop, but I think ghoul is pretty decent. Uh, just because it's a, another solid two drop as a whole. All right. So pack number five, Valor Singer is really the only thing in our color. Blue and white seem kind of open. Green also seems decently open. But I think we take the Valor Singer just because that's within our colors. And maybe we may have to switch to a different color if it doesn't seem like black or red are open. So it's definitely one of those things we'll have to wait and see. Um, but I do think we the cards we have chosen and these colors are definitely very good. Valor Singer is very good because it makes anything that was possibly played before it uh, get that additional plus one power, which is definitely very good. Um, yeah, green is green seems open for the most part because I've seen a decent amount of green cards. Black is I'm unsure to really classify, and I've only seen a handful of red cards just because we only have two. Um, the Ferris Imp is a three mana two one flyer. Whenever one or more permanents we control leave the battlefield, scry one. That actually works well if we have things that have like you know like treasures or something like that, and then improvised weaponry makes treasures. Though it is a sorcery speed removal spell, and but though it can do damage to any target, um. I think we take the weaponry just because, like I said, I, I the, the pack's interesting, I would say, for our colors. Not the greatest. Um, this pack isn't great for our colors. Uh, is there, what's the best card here? Not good. The gate's okay. Um, I think we take the gate just because it could be useful if we splash green or go green. Um, if green stays open. Um, to the target creature gets plus one plus zero and indestructible could be a cool combat trick. Better cap, short target creature flying. Um, spend mana with this to cast dragon. It enters the battlefield, put additional plus one plus one counter and gains hexproof until our next turn. Uh, I think the card is I think the card we take is armor shadows just because that's within our color. Um, it's not bad. It's a cool combat trick. Kind of you know catch someone off guard. Maybe swing with a, a prowler. They block and then we. Uh, we we uh, we trick them with that. Uh, the gate got passed around, so no one took the gate. Uh, hook core is not bad because it has replayability and it plays well with our rules. So I think that's probably the pick there. And the other cards are not within our color. The orb is not really great as much as it searches for lands. Yeah, the person to our um, to our right is just hanging out with all the packs. So either they're going to time or druid's not good. Gray Slad is interesting. As long as there are four more creature cards in our graveyard, it has Menace and Death Touch. I guess that's the play. Um, I guess we'll take the blue card. Uh, we'll take the blue card. Uh, blue seems wide open just because uh, there was just a bunch of cards from that. All right, so the Altar of Ball, uh, this card's really good. Um, you know, two mana, we can we can get a tap three exile creature we control, return target creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield, activate only as a sorcery. Or for three mana, we can create a tap four one skeleton token with menace. Doesn't seem bad. Uh, Lacania is also really good, two three for two mana, specialized to two, we exile card from graveyard and then it does a whole bunch of words on the other side. Uh, Rabble Rouser is really good. Outside of that, it doesn't really, look, nothing really looks super impressive. And I think it's really, I feel like it's, it's, it's actually the disciple here. 
Just because I feel like she has much more upside because she also takes other our opponent's things. Um, I feel like it's an easy snap. You take like Skullport Merchant because it has a lot of value. Um, you take another another Ghoul is good. We still don't have really any way to max to capitalize on this other than you know eating our uh, hooker our hook horror. Um, Sigil of Markle, three mana at the beginning of our combat. Middle card it when you do. If there's four more creature cards in our graveyard, put a plus one plus one counter or target creature. Gains death touch on a turn. Doesn't seem great. It seems like a card that would rotate around. There's a rare here that I guess no one wants so far. I think we take the goblin. Two mana, solid. Can you get bigger. Um, four mana, four, four sacrifice up to three permanents. If they were three or more card types, among them sacrifice permanents, each opponent loses three life. Draw three cards. It seems very aggressive. Uh, I think we take the Prowler. Um, Elemental's okay. Axe is not bad because you can kind of like trick into giving something double strike. Then whenever a quick creature attacks, double its power to end a turn. That could be pretty good. Um, this pack's not really great for us. Uh, unexpected allies, target non token creature you control, it gets plus to plus zero and double team. It also gains first strike if it, same name as another creature control, uh, in, or a creature in our graveyard. I guess we take the dragon just because it's the better card. And it looks like the player, it looks like either the players just either they, they disconnected and they're just timed out because they're just sitting on all these packs. Wow, there's another gate. <laughs> That's the second Baldur's Gate, but I'm gonna give the Nefarious Imp just because it's in our color. We're definitely low to the ground for the most part. I mean, two, we have seven twos and seven threes currently in our deck. Uh, Eye of the Beholders, an okay card. This is not great because I don't have a lot of like doubles of cards in my deck. I guess we take the Beholder, but kind of expensive removal. I mean, it's possible removal if we want to get to our number, but it's probably something I don't want to take. And I think this player is literally holding all the packs because there's like two packs in pass around and then there's five packs to my right. So, well, we have Dragonfire. Um, I guess Grave Choice is kind of removal. Um, I'll throw the sword in the sideboard. Uh, what else we have removal wise? Weaponry. Outside of that, not a lot of removal, which could be a little bit of a challenge. So we do have some tricks, so maybe the tricks can be used as removal if need be in certain situations. Uh, not really anything in our color. I guess we could take the pit. Maybe. Throw it on my sideboard if we need the removal. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of like a black deck with a little bit of red in it, not a lot of red. Uh, none of these cards are really that great. I think we take. I think we take the, you know, I have the shot. Um, Beholder's not great. That's not great. But I think we take the Beholder. Probably only play one of them because it's a super expensive removal. I think I have like one card I still have to take. I have to take one more card and then I'm technically done. Yeah, Dragon. But. Oh, okay. Um, so Ancient Brass Dragon, seven mana, seven, six flyer. When it deals damage to a player, roll d20. When you do put any number of target creature cards with total mana value less. Oh, yeah, we'll take that. That's good. I was going to be, I was kind of curious what our top end was going to be, but that, that, that seems like a good top end card. I didn't even look at anything else. It's just 
Mythic has a lot of words and something about taking cards out of a graveyard to have mana value X or less. Um, so seems seems good. Just hopefully it doesn't die, right? It has to at least attack once and then it probably probably ends the game right there. Oh, and it's from graveyards. It's not just from our graveyard. Okay, that card's yeah, that card's good if we can get in with it. All right, so reach trample ward two specialize four the two two bear and then you can exile it. What if it? What if we played it with black? Exile it from a great target creature control perpetually gains menace. Activate only as a sorcery. It's okay. It doesn't seem great though. Um, elemental is okay. Create a treasure token. I guess the dragon's okay. It flies, I guess. And we can create a treasure token at instant speed, so it's like a little bit of mana ramp for red. Not really the greatest, I would say. Um, another dragon fire is really good. Gates really good. I would say we take the dragon fire just because it's another removal spell. It's a good removal spell. We have a couple dragons in the deck, like the brass dragon. So definitely like we can do some big damage um, with it if we either have it out or it's in our hand. Uh, what does this rare do? We mana stroke of luck. Look at top four cards of our library. Choose one of them. Put all the cards with the same name of the chosen card among them into our hand. We lose one life for each. That does not seem very good. Um, another dragon fire seems really, really good. Uh, gate is really good. Yeah, I think Dragonfire is actually probably the play, even though we already had to. So I, I feel like there's less redundancy with the Dragonfire, um, and that means we probably don't def we don't have to play like some of this other removal, like the Beholder or even the Spike Trap from our from our uh, sideboard, which is probably good. Uh, Valor Singer is probably good. Another Red Dragon's okay. Earth Cult Elementals is a big card, but definitely not the greatest. Um, this isn't bad, but I think we're a little bit more of a mid-range deck uh, spell-wise, so I think we take the Valor Singer just because that's the most upside for our deck. Um, Ghost Lantern's all right, as it kind of allows us to return a card back from our graveyard to our hand, um, and then whenever we reach the control dies, put a plus one plus one counter equipped creature. Not bad. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess we can play the Wanderer, because if we kill something, we can cheat it out for cheap. Yeah, we're kind of like a mono black deck with a splash of splash of red. Uh, another Goblin Trap Finder, Fireball, Tools. Maybe we take the Trap Finder, because we can use that as fodder for a goal. It's not a bad play. You know, having that additional way to kind of dig things through our deck and then kind of get them out. Uh, find some prisoners. You hear something. Um, no, I'll take this. Uh, I guess the mana rock is not bad. We have a couple dragons, so I guess we can give a dragon haste. So if like we use that mana rock to maybe give it, give our big dragon haste, could be really good play. Um, sure, we'll take a gray salad. Uh, none of these cards are really good for our deck. Maybe follow the tracks. Uh, bail the beholders. Probably not gonna play, and the one mana guy. Yet again, I think we end up with a pretty decent, uh, you know, Rakdos deck. Let's just see what the decksmith says. Yeah, Rakdos is probably the best color. Other colors really aren't good. It actually doesn't recommend playing like um, Jund at all. So it's definitely interesting there. Um, so what do we have currently in the deck? Uh, we have 26. So we do have to trim it down a little bit. Um, Weaponry is pretty good. I don't think we want the the sounds. Um, 
just because it doesn't seem like a, it's going to be a card that we're going to be able to take advantage of. Um, I guess we take art. We get rid of armor in the shadows. I know it's a decent trick, but I do think we have an okay removal because we have. I guess that's technically removal. Uh, weaponry. Three dragon spires. Yeah, I guess that's pretty good. Um, so that's not bad removal. I mean, it could be better, but I still think that's okay. We don't have like an outright kill spell. Like everything's damage based, which is kind of unfortunate. We also have some death touch, so I think that helps a little bit with that as well. Um, and then what is our mana breakdown of colors? 12 and 11, so we probably want to go 9 and 8. Um, is there anything that we really want to... We play just like one Eye of the Beholder and it just maybe just has like something that can kill a pretty decently big thing. Um, my problem is Wander is like a weird, like weird kind of like synergy kind of card, but it's actually not that bad because we can, we have multiple ways of possibly sacrificing it. I could... I could go 16 lands. Is that something that we'd want to do? We have a couple ways to produce some treasures. Maybe 16 lands is okay. We go 8 and 8. Or... Hmm. Um... Just kind of curious what it, what's recommended. Telling me, telling me to put armor shadows and get rid of orb and beholder. I mean, it's not bad, I guess. I mean, because this is kind of gimmicky and it's cost three mana just to put it into a creep. I mean, I guess I could get rid of that. And it wants me to add one of these. As long as there's four more creature cards in your graveyard, it has menace and death touch. But it's only a four one, so it's like awkward. I guess it's also saying that I should only play 22 or 20 or 20, uh, 16 land. Despite I'm just like looking at what it's recommended to cut. Um, I think I just play, I play the one mana card and then we, we, uh, we don't play what it was recommended. Um, and then we go to black, some fancy black lands here, some nice swamps, Glad eight of these. Oh, I actually wants nine. Interesting. How many swamp? I want seven. So. All right. So I know I'm not technically going like, with what Draftsmith says. I do feel like maybe having one extra ride the beholder is probably good for removal as you have three dragon fires, one grave choice, one weaponry and one beholder. I feel like six is a decent amount to have. Um, and I do think the rest of the main deck is actually pretty good. Um, I just don't think this card makes any sense just because as much as it is kind of a big creature and it gets eventually menace, it's just a 4-1 that they can throw a 1-1 in front of and block it. So I feel like it doesn't kill much until it gets that menace and death touch. So let's dive into some games and kind of see how we do with our draft. All right, we're on the play. Um, it's a keepable hand. So definitely going to keep. I have three mana. I have my colors. I have a little bit of removal. So we'll play a swamp and we'll say go. All right. Flashed in spike trap seems interesting. Could have left it up as some tricky priority thing. Okay. Um, we'll swing in for two. Those are both instant, so definitely not bad. Okay. I'll just say go. Definitely an interesting player. All right, they're not playing anything. Is this like, I have no idea what's happening right now. There's not a priority stick either. Okay, there's a player there. There's someone that looked at a land. Sure. 
You get another one. I'll block. Um, we'll get Skull Port and we'll attack in. We'll say go. I mean, they have to tap their mana out if they want to get rid of Skull Port Merchant here. Sure. We'll make you sacrifice it. Um, we're missing a land. We'll play a Hobgoblin and we'll say go. They have a lot of mana. They have seven mana. It's a lot. Sure. Are we specializing? Sure. Uh, we'll decline and we'll just Dragon Spire it. Okay. Game one was uh, pretty straightforward. Opponent kept a very slow hand. All right, we're on the play. I think our hand's okay. I mean, I mean, we are missing our red mana, but I do think we can draw into it. So it's definitely a playable hand. And kind of knowing the way I feel like MTG kind of goes, I feel like um, you were more likely to have uh, draw. You more likely to draw lands than you are to draw non lands. So overall, not that bad, you know, even though we're, we're kind of, you know, a little stuck on mana, that's fine. I'm not going to, I mean, they could attack, but I'll block. I uh, will play that at instant speed, but we missed the land. We'll see if they want to trade. I mean, I get a card draw out of it, so. All right, so they're gonna take that trade. That's perfectly fine with us. They get a scry, which is not bad for them. They can set up the next card draw. They don't like their top card. We get a red mana. Uh, we'll say go, because we can do a lot of stuff at instant speed. So I don't think we're like rushed to really do a lot here. Sure. Um, we'll create treasure token. Um, I'll say go. I don't really want to like cast my big thing. So I think, uh, I play my young dragon. I don't really have any other plays. I feel like we play young dragon that maybe leaves them to hold back now. We'll hold back. I don't want to block attack my into my my, my two two into the, into their one two. We have five mana, which isn't bad. They have a lot of cards. Um, they've only played three things from what I'm aware of. I can't block. Still can't block. I'll take three. Drider, not bad. Um, control dragon. Oh, I do control dragon. Uh, we'll decline. You guys, another scry. They like their top card. Swing for five. Um, we'll say go. 
just kind of playing it slow, kind of seeing what they're doing. They take go. They're going to swing for three. Fine. Nope, not swinging in for three. Swinging in just for two. That's fine. All right, so they're just keeping it slow as well. Uh, combat trick, which is nice. Swing in for five. We'll, uh, we'll pump this and just give it indestructible. Let's we'll see if they want to do something. They could have the dragon that gives the target creature like hexproof or something. We sneak in, we give it dragon's fire. Sure. That's fine. They get some cards, they get some treasure. It still gets plus one plus zero indestructible unless they want to do something about it. Uh, we'll play goblin and we'll say go. Kind of set up for the following turn just because that's a pretty decent uh, attack. Because so they flash in Manticore. Seems like an odd play because nothing got dealt damage, so nothing actually dies. Sure. So they can attack him for four in the air. Uh, we'll kill their thing that's been scrying, so they only deal two. I mean, they could sacrifice it again if they have a play. Or not. They get another scry. Maybe they're missing double green. Maybe that's the, the big thing here. They like their top card again. You get dealt two. Another green. Nice. Hollow bear. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I mean, even though we're limited on lands, we're still doing pretty well. Uh, we'll reveal a dragon card and we'll kill the owl bear. So now they're at two. They have to leave a blocker back now. If they tap out, then okay, they're at four. Not bad. Okay. Do I have a creature? I do. Um, I could make them sacrifice it, right? Make them sacrifice one of their creatures. We still get in for decent damage. I mean, what, however they block here, well, we can still block, we can still attack pretty well. Sure. Um, yeah, I guess I play this. I can eat a creature, possibly. I'm surprised I'm doing so well with only this many cards. I didn't draw more than four lands, so very surprised. Our opponent have something. So, funny thing here, right? If they have a big creature, let's just say they have like the guy who gains three life, sure. So the funny thing about this is that they're dead either way. Sure. 
is because even if they play that creature, right, and they have good blocks, um, I have enough creatures on the board that I can, I can actually attack through. Um, so if they only had the one creature, even if they were at like multi, if they were higher life total, uh, next turn all I would have to do is put the lantern on the three one, um, which in turn. Uh, you know, it would have been okay. Uh, I could have also put the, you know, the thing here, which, you know, if I sacrifice this to pump this, so at this double blocks, that would have been fine. Um, you know, even with a hand that was kind of clunky, you know, we had four lands. We just had our removal, which actually helped us out in this. You know, we just had the answers for whatever they were doing. So, overall, not a bad game. Um, so, unlike the previous hand... As much as I have the removal, I I don't feel 100% confident that I'll draw the black mana to play other things, like to actually draw draw you know get some board presence here. So I do think as much as there's two dragon fires, I do think this is a mulligan. Okay, I mean this is not much better, but we have a merchant. Um, I think we get rid of the the wanderer as much as. Yeah, I think we, 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 we keep this because the merchant can at least, you know, create a treasure. This then creates a treasure. So then there's actually some pretty decent plays. I mean, there's also a possibility I should go up to like, you know, I should probably go up land wise. Sure. So they're going to be a graveyard deck. Got it. We'll play the Death Toucher. So if they kill it, we get a card. We'll be aggressive with it. They're looking at it. They keep on looking at their card. It's like we get it. Sure. Walrus. Perfectly fine. Walrus isn't a bad card. It's a three mana. Get to tap it for add one mana of any color. So not a bad card if you really want to like make sure you are uh, keeping your mana right. So we'll play a land. We'll swing in. See if they want to block. They don't. Um, so it could be possible that they're setting up for something big. I think this is where we probably want to Skullport Merchant just in case they want to um, attack in first, possibly. Merchant blocks very well. Also gives me an avenue, possibly down the road, to sacrifice the, pl pr the Prowler to it to get some additional card advantage. So you essentially tap two and draw two cards with with the uh, merchant. So it could be a target for removal if they don't if they don't want to do that, and that stops them from also playing their three mana two, their three mana four one. They're being very analytical of exactly what they want to do here, though. So that's always a good sign. They could tap out. I mean, if they attack, maybe I just let the attack go. Maybe they have a way to give something death touch. And I'm like, mm, I'd rather keep my merchant around. I'll, I'll take two points of damage. Maybe they're playing a third color and they have another color in their hand. And they can't physically play it. Like as much as I'm, I have red stuff in my hand, I actually have treasures, which allows me to play it. So definitely not bad. I, have, I feel like it's a removal. It's either I want to play a creature or I want to play removal. That's fine. We'll get it back next turn. Swing it for two. Can't specialize yet. You need five mana. We got red mana. So we'll swing him first. Make him think that we want to get a card. Maybe they won't block. They won't block. We'll uh, weaponry here. We'll uh, get back our creature. We'll get another treasure, so we have we have a uh, uh, total of seven mana. Technically, we could play dragon. We could play um, we could play ghoul, which is not bad. I think we play ghoul. It blocks pretty well. And then we also have mana open in case we want to do something. So definitely not bad board state here against our opponent. I mean, that's the one downfall I think to cards like this that remove things from the battlefield. Target opponent uh, discards two cards and mills two cards and loses two life. Well, I guess in response, I will uh, make a treasure so I don't lose my dragon. And I'll auto pay. So I create a treasure anyway. Uh, 
And, you know, I still have a card to play next turn. And I mean, I guess they could play their creature. They only have two cards, right? So they didn't really do... I mean, sure, they made me discard. They, I got rid of a land. I milled the land. They play their big creature. That's fine. Um, right, so I'm in a good spot here. I'll swing in with both of these. I feel like they don't want to block... I mean, either way, their their creatures dead. If they do block, they don't block. Still alive. Then we get dealt four. That's fine. I mean, my merchant blocks well. Um, I play my dragon. We'll say go. So if they attack him against us, we can attack him back well against them. We can sacrifice possibly whatever they're going to actually possibly use a kill spell on. That's fine. So their next spell perpetually has flying. I may actually sacrifice the prowler here just to get double uh, double draw, because I could use a little bit more momentum in my deck. Um, there's some good cards I could draw out of this. Sure. Discarding. We're just going to flip it. So it's a 2-4 flyer. I'll take 4. Alright, so this is definitely good. Um, what we have here, right? So we can attack him pretty well. Um, I am going to play the horror now just because that means I can actually uh, block pretty I can actually um, attack pretty well here uh, that's perfectly fine I get to draw a card awesome And now we have a good block as well, right? Because our hook horror comes back. Sure, pilgrim size fine. We get a land. We have five, six lands. So if we top deck a land, we can actually get back our. Um... Sure. Like I don't mind at this point because I'm not I don't have the mana open. I will block their 4 1 with my hook horror as well. I take two in the air at the moment if they decide to attack, plus the additional one. They may attack in just for two, because I can't block. Then we swing back for three. Definitely a lot of big decisions, I think, for them, right? I mean, the benefit of the hook horror is at least we can block their 4-1 pretty well. And the thing is, they can't attack him with anything else. So we're only going to hit for two. We're not going to drain because it's I believe it's every other. Okay, so we're going to get drained for one. Uh, we'll double block here. Just because even regardless of what happens, the blocks are still good. We'll get a 2-2 back. Sure. I mean, that's probably fine, I think, as well. They're going to need some life. That's that's fine. All right, so we need to get land. We got a specialized card, which isn't bad. Um, though I don't really want to specialize our... Uh, our big card away, which is kind of like the thing. Um...
see if they block. They probably don't block. We'll play Vakana. And we'll just say go. I mean, to be quite honest, I could just use a removal spell would be nice in this position. They could attack in, they swing it for four, five, six. Six, I guess. I go down to four. They die on the backswing unless they have something. Right, two, four, seven, nine. Okay, they're at 11. Uh, we'll exile a card from a graveyard. Uh, we'll exile a card from a graveyard. Um, and why not? I like your cards anyway. You have nice cards. We'll get the 3-3. Three, three. All right, so we got our land here, right? So am I dead, actually, now that I think about it? Well... All right, I think the thing is to specialize. Unfortunately, as much as I would love to have my flyer, We'll get rid of their Lulu. They're at nine, and I think that's game. All right, took a minute there to figure out that line. I know it was a little complicated, um, but overall it was, I think, a good, good line um, because I do think if we would have let them have their Lulu um, and we just played our big creature at, on that turn, we would have, um, they would have just attacked. We would have only blocked their Lulu. They would still do the two from the two other flying creatures uh, that have attacked other than Lulu. So we'll gun down a two. And then we would have also taken the two from the other two flyers who couldn't block it, which would have been game. Uh, so the, I think the better play was to specialize the Vakana, which, uh, which was the thing was we could cast that creature. And then when it comes into the battlefields, uh, that, that opponent each loses two life and we would gain two life. Um, so that kind of like is why we gained a little bit of life and we got rid of their Lulu. So even if we couldn't kill them on this swing, we were still able to put them in a position that they probably couldn't attack us with only two damage in the air against our board state. So definitely, I think that that, that helped that we drew the Vakana as much as, you know, we had our nice big brass dragon. Uh, it was definitely a better, better route to go around than just have them just attack us and possibly just win, even though we had a big dragon on the board. All right, opponent goes first. Hand's a little bit slow because we have our three drops, but we have mana, which I think is fine. And we're also on the draw, so I feel like we can draw into what we need. So I think I keep because I have a little bit of everything. I would say the Imp is probably the most interesting card out of everything in the deck, but I think it synergizes okay with our treasures to use to sacrifice. I guess it's also good for us that our opponent mulliganed on turn one. So we drew a two drop, which is definitely good. Um, though we are on the the play, not the draw, so it's definitely um, we're on the draw, we're on the draw, not the play. So it's definitely a little, it hits a little bit differently than it would be if we were turn two, they go, and then now we're on turn three, they go, um, so they can play something here, kind of thing. They don't, which is good. Um, he's swinging for two. See if they have anything to go here. If they want to use a trick, it seems like there's some stick. They probably don't want us to get that advantage, so we'll just go ahead and we'll merchant. Put up our defenses. They don't really have anything that's gonna kill, um, you know, the merchant. Unless they have like a dragon's fire and they have, you know, a dragon that has four power or greater to kill it. So definitely not a bad, I think, turn two for us. Ooh, they say go. That's not good for our opponent. Um, so I do think I played the Nefarious Imp. Yet again, sets very well in this position, just because if we do decide to sacrifice our treasure now, we're going to get that additional card advantage. Uh, we'll swing for three, just because it looks pretty okay. 
So we're going to take three. Improvised weaponry is not a card that's going to be, like, out of nowhere. We'll say go. We don't have to, like, put pressure on them. They're the ones behind. So... They're going to create a treasure token. That's good. We'll say go. Awesome. We drew a trap finder, which is actually not bad, as it allows us to um, uh, get, you know, a little bit of ways to have some sort of sacrifice fodder. We could sacrifice now, get a card draw, get a card. Then we can play out Grim Wanderer. Uh, I mean, this is not going to matter because we're, we're going to look, we're going to get a card randomly through our deck, but might as well fix the top. Awesome. Awesome. We'll play Grim Wanderer. Uh, we'll say go because we can't play the Pow Prowler now because it's just going to die anyway at the end of turn. So they need a blue. But they may be a little too far behind at this, at this point right now in the game, just because we drew quite a bit. Are we, we have a little bit out here. So they only have five mana. Maybe they have like one big creature. Maybe they have a creature that has blue mana. We can swing for we could swing for lethal next turn if they don't put anything out in front of us because that's it's four, five on the left and we have a five three. So definitely looking pretty good. So they really need to put up some sort of threat in order to block this damage, or they're they're unfortunately done for in this game. I would say. I would also say this is maybe not a format that you want to play three colors in just because there aren't any filter lands. Uh, that's fine. So we'll get. Um, no, I don't want to land, I don't think. Well, I got to land anyway. Uh, we'll play Prowler. We'll also play Lantern. And might as well equip the Lantern to the 5-3. Um, just because the Prowler is going to die. Or two. And I'll also play the, the Vakana. So then the Prowler goes up. It's a 6-4. We draw a card. And I guess they're good game. Unfortunately, they got mana screwed. It's one of the unfortunate parts when you, like I said, play a three-color deck in a format. I feel like at best supports two colors at most. Sure. They have a trick. If you bounce it, it's fine. If you minus it, it's fine. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we didn't really get to see a lot of what our opponent was doing. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you know, hard to play three colors in a format. Just can't really filter out into the colors. Like it's not like Streets of New Capenna where we had the creatures that could go on a land and make it produce three different colors. Then on top of that, we had the, the dual lands of the set. So I would say, you know, Baldur's Gate early on seems like a set that seems very, you know, narrow-minded that you want to be monocolored. Oh, it's got a bunch of coins. So overall we're four and oh. Awesome. You know, first draft of Baldur's Gate. I know we're kind of low ranked currently. Uh, but four no is not bad. We know we're gonna walk away at least with three packs, fourteen hundred gems. Let's see if we can finish off and get to you know seven wins. It's definitely one of those things. You know the deck has been forming even with limited mana in some of the games still very well. All right, on the play. Um, yeah, hands fine. Hands great. You know we got we got we got some plays. Where we we you know we have Spulcher, we have you know into Stinger. Um, definitely a lot of stuff to get us you know kind of moving along here two-handed axe is really good uh we'll play we'll, we'll actually play the stinger just because it will help us here it's gonna pump up our two two into a three power creature and we'll say go i forgot that we had the priority stick because we can sacrifice once per turn they're playing three colors perfectly fine we can still pump up the stinger so we're good there um, we could go ahead and we play another Spulcher, so definitely good there. Uh, we'll pump itself up. We'll swing in. Uh, maybe next turn we get a big attack in with a, with a two-handed axe kind of thing. 
Dragonfire could take out possibly whatever they have here. We also could Grave Choice, depending on what they play out. Maybe they have like another mana, they play Owl Bear. We make them sacrifice Owl Bear. Sure, they get a card out of it, but then they sacrifice their treasure. They're really looking at our ghoul here. I guess they, they are analyzing it. It is a ghoul. It does things. We can swing it for five next turn. Possibly an additional, additional little bit. Sure. Orb. They're, they're, they want to dig up for maybe their lands. They're going to dig up for their lands. All right, so they're ramping. So maybe they're going to play a big creature here, maybe gain a little bit of life. I don't really know. Forest in a gate. Not bad. Probably put the gate out because it comes into play tapped. Uh, fifth land's not bad because that leaves mana open. So, problem is, right, I'm going to pump, and I'm going to give my 3-3 three, three double strike, so they're going to get dealt a good amount of damage here, they're at 6. And we're going to say go. We're going to let them do their best here, right? Because we're in a position that we could technically win next turn, depending on what they do. They haven't done much to really, you know, maintain a board state of some sort. Um, We've just been putting pressure on them the whole time. They, they ramped up to six mana, so Pilgrim's Eye is fine. I mean, if that's the best they're going to do, I think that's good for us. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to just Pilgrim's Eye, we're just going to Dragon's Fire. Um, we'll play Axe. Up, equip here. And we'll pump. Sure. That's fine. Just thought four. They gotta play something. They gotta get themselves back in the game here. They're still whittling away. Seven mana. They can play something big. They have a handful of spells here. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. Whenever you cast, okay. Whenever you cast an adventure or dragon spell. Oh. go us so here we are in game five of my draft um i'm actually recording this part just because i actually noticed when i was actually going through the recording i actually didn't talk too much for the most part during these next few games so i'll probably be voicing over these uh, as they are very interesting games and i do think there's some points i want to point out in each one of those games so this one in game five we are silver ranked uh currently in the draft and our opponent that we get matched up is actually pretty high ranked mythic which is definitely very surprising to see here with me being only a silver rank though at this point in the draft i am undefeated so i didn't know if that had something to do with it so definitely kind of interesting just to kind of note right off the bat um and we get our first open in hand here we do have a, a three swamps a mountain a ghost lantern dragon fire and valor singer a little bit of a slow hand but definitely there are some playables here we do have a little bit of removal the ghost lantern is not the greatest but definitely something we can get out early if we wanted to or save it for the late game if we want to get something back but definitely not a bad hand and we at least have four lands so we're definitely you know going to be able to play most of the things in our deck so definitely going to be a keep i would say just because i do think it's something that we could play through 
and still do pretty okay with even being on the draw so we do have the benefit of drawing to maybe finding something so definitely not bad we ended up drawing a young red dragon so that definitely helps out a lot we can turn to uh kind of use the, the one side to get a treasure token and then kind of ramp out and kind of get that additional uh get that additional uh mana so that we can maybe cast something to turn earlier so we play the lantern we, we kind of say nah we don't need that you know way to get something back our opponent's blue white uh we say go uh, as we're gonna end of turn play young red dragon get a treasure token our opponent plays third land plays dawnbringer cleric uh i believe in this point they gain some life which is not a big deal you know that 22 uh you know not any thought of pressure their their cleric only draws for um you know is only gonna deal one damage so we, we get our treasure token we're up to three mana and i go ahead and play valor slinger because it blocks pretty well against their odd uh, dawnbringer cleric and if we just have that it actually can attack well into it as well because it's going to get three power from its own effect uh still really good hand you know a lot of playables next time we play the imp uh we can also have the combat trick our opponent raise a frost so still you know not bad you know they're just tapping us down not a big deal but they do it main phase which is definitely a strange play right as it is something that you could do in response um you could wait until we go maybe they want to get that one damage in i'm not really sure but definitely kind of an interesting play there i would say from our opponent they go ahead and they swing in for one so kind of our opponent's playing a little bit strange but still not too bad for what they kind of have or state wise we play young dragon for four mana uh so now we have a three two flyer in the air which is definitely good um and we do have some ways of removal as we drew a second dragon's breath which we have a dragon so it's either going to do three or three so it's not like we're going to be able to get dragon's breath for more damage um they play blur so they exile their their cleric from field back to their you know exile off flicker it back on to gain some life uh though they should have attacked him for at least one because they would have been able to at least do one additional point of damage they say go and that's about all they play we get another land so we're getting a little bit flooded but we still have a lot of playables um i mean might as well attack him for three because we can race them better uh in this board state and then we play our imp so if anything leaves the battlefield now at this point they are going to we are going to be able to scry so allow us to dig a little bit deeper and we do have some decent combat tricks in our hand that's going to allow us to you know progress the board pretty well uh there is a part of me that maybe should have equipped the lantern onto something there's that's the one mistake i think i noticed in this game is that i kept the lantern unequipped for quite a while um but yet again definitely one of those things that you know wasn't didn't end up being the biggest deal here in this match they have five mana and that's about all they have done so far is that they have five mana and they swing in with their cleric uh we're gonna no block this just because we kind of want to see it's only one point of damage it's not a big deal we have removal but it's not really worth it to do the cleric unless they do something with the cleric they play hippogriff which is kind of one of the things that we want uh in a sense so we decide to dragons fire it um we'll decline it because you know the dragon it's gonna do three damage either way uh they go ahead and they play humiliation i always forget so the one thing if you decide to play Baldur's gate or arena is the way the trigger works for humiliation is that you kind of want you somehow need the spell needs to resolve in a way so it's unfortunate because the way humiliation works it removes perpetually moves all abilities that that creature has so if you give it indestructible it will lose indestructible so us one tapping that one mana to give our creature indestructible doesn't matter because it'll just end up losing it so it doesn't really work in that sense to kind of protect the creature so that's kind of a misplay by me i kind of forgot how it worked I was like wait it died but it's not a big deal and that's kind of like i said the one benefit if we would have kept the the lantern on something we would have got a plus one plus one counter on something so definitely kind of one of those misplays by me we have the kana here another good card we'll swing it for two um and now i was like oh maybe i should equip the the lantern just in case they decide to remove something now which is you know it's not a big deal um they're gonna swing they're not gonna swing we're gonna exile a card from a graveyard we take their hippogriff just because we can specialize next turn which we get a red mana source and i thought for a second i'm like do i want to specialize now do i want to specialize later i'm like you know what let's just specialize now we, we can discard the mountain we can get a bigger creature out on the battlefield we can also cast their creature and now we're doing a lot of damage or possibly cast a creature at least for now we'll leave up the protection i thought for a second i had the mana but it's still fine three four we're swinging it for five they go down to 14 they're not going to block which is definitely also very strange i don't know if our opponent at this point has given up because a lot of mana not really doing too much definitely seems a little bit strange um 
and they have been doing a lot with their cleric as well which like i said it seems a little bit weird but they're also going to attack in for one so it's like our opponent's like playing um playing it really really strange i would say overall when it comes to how they would play i think in this board state uh based on what we have on the battlefield um but you know they haven't played anything and they have a ton of mana so it's like very weird that you know there's six they have six cards in hand and they played maybe maybe a couple spells at most and they say go so they're at nine uh, at this point we pretty much have control of the game right because we can swing in now for a total of eight um and give our creature flying it goes over they're at one um and we can just play our Skullport merchant but we say go um just because you know yet again don't know if there's any tricks our opponent scoops and we end up beating someone in mythic which i found very surprising i was not thinking that we were going to beat someone in mythic because i thought it maybe thought our deck was good it matches up against someone who had a, also a good deck but our opponent just really didn't end up doing much which definitely came out as an overall surprise for what you know i thought the game was going to turn out to be so definitely a good game on our end i mean granted we weren't really challenged in the regard of really you know any sort of disruption on the battlefield other than us in our one creature tap down for the game so definitely a good game uh we move on to five and oh in the draft which is definitely awesome uh so we get another good hand you know we have three mana we have playables we have pool we have wander we have a little bit of uh you know expensive removal and we also have a red dragon so still a capable hand you know we can cast red dragons uh adventure side on turn two we can also play ghoul we can also play wander depending if something gets killed so definitely overall great hand i i would say the removal is a little bit expensive but you know definitely not that bad of a card we also get another removal spell with our grave choice we play red we play black they play red white uh we play red uh, we play ghoul here uh which i think is a pretty strong play if they decide to remove it then you know they get a ghoul out of the way then we can follow that up with something the following turn I believe they go ahead and they play a creature, like they get a treasure out of it, not bad. Um, we get a improved weaponry, which in that regard, we can always do it to their creature and get a treasure. I thought about it for a second, but I'm like, ah, we'll, we'll do this just because I think that's pretty good. And we'll swing it for two, put pressure on our opponent. They don't want anything on the battlefield, though they're also ramped up with four mana technically with their treasure. Now they have five. Um, you know next turn we have some decent plays depending on what they do we can make them sacrifice something we can um you know kill something our opponent has their four four we can make them sacrifice it which is great it's not two or less we don't get a duplicate to our hand but making them sacrifice a four four is great and we still have mana open to do stuff in case they do something so we swing it for two and we play our grim wanderer to now have a five three on the battlefield so definitely gonna gonna good pressure on our opponent because now we can swing it for seven uh, and now they actually have to deal with the Wanderer, or it's, you know, gonna, they're going to get out of hand a little bit with what's happening. And they play Jaded Sellsword, which is, yet again, a good play, um, nonetheless. Uh, they say go, we go. Uh, we get a land, which is good for us. Then they Valor Sting we Valor Stinger, we go to combat, we give our pool also... Um, you know the plus one plus zero uh they block the stinger they block the wander we say that's fine you know we trade we clean up the board a little bit we still have board advantage with two creatures we also have red dragon that we can play next turn we can play for a treasure to get our uh removal out uh they play a dust guard which is fine because the next creature they come play on the battlefield is gonna have additional plus one plus zero which is not a big deal uh they only have red they have two cards and they play a two two that comes out as a three two so overall not bad for us um, I go ahead, I play treasure token, so we go up to six mana. Then we get another land, which is not bad. And this is kind of where I think I make a mistake in this game. Um, as I swing in, which I think is a perfect, perfectly fine attack because we have the advantage in a way because we're we have more pressure on them. Um, they have decent blocks, but definitely, you know, it's not impossible for us to do okay here. So, so this is where it's actually interesting. So I actually take, let, you know, I let blocks happen. So we pretty much exchange and clean up and the board's completely empty, but I know I have a young red dragon that I can follow up with. Um, personally, I feel like in this situation, what I should have done differently, which now looking back on it is something that I shouldn't have done or I should have done was either A, 
I kill the creature that's blocking the Void Stinger and let the Ghoul, you know, kill uh, the 3 1. Um, or I could have had, uh, you know, I could have, you know, eaten the Void Stinger. This would have blocked into that, killed this. This would have still been on the battlefield, but then we could have always followed that up with a removal spell. So, definitely one of those things I probably looking back on, and this probably should have done differently in this game because. Uh, you know, I have a single creature. They have a single card. If they have removal, then my creature's dead. And then we're just kind of we're just trying to top deck now. Whoever has the bigger threat. So I do think this is where I made one slight mistake in this game, uh, just in that standpoint, because I thought like, ah, eh, you know, all the trades happen just because. Um, so I play red dragon. I'm like, okay, I can still put pressure. I can swing him for three in the turn in the air. That's definitely very good. I have a removal spell if they play a creature. They play a 3-2, which is definitely good for them. Um, this has case, and then it allows them to kind of like shuffle things in from their from their hand into, you know, and like draw cards. So it's definitely a very good specialized card. I don't actually know the full effect, um, but it's overall, you know, it gets plus X, plus X, depending on we they draw two and stuff. So it's definitely a good, good card that helps them get a little bit more uh, advantage. Uh, we attack in for three. We're not really worried about what's happening right now because we still are ahead. In that sense, even though they can attack him for four, we can't. We have removal, so we can slow them down if we need to. But we're not underneath a ton of pressure in that sense. And they're thinking about it. They have three cards in hand now. We have two cards, one being a land and one being the eye of the beholder. Definitely need something here to put more pressure on our opponent, but definitely not out of, out of the woods just yet, even though the game's been more so in our favor. Uh, they play uh, Raven Guard, which is a very good good card, it seems like, overall. Um, and they're going to give target on token creature double uh, double team, which we don't want them to have because um, then they get another copy, which then can back up you know, the other copy if we kill it. So definitely something that we didn't want to happen. Um, but now they go down to the 3-3. They play Red Dragon, get a treasure. So they also have a flyer that they can put pressure on us. So we definitely need to find something to answer what's on the board. Uh, we go attack in for three. So now they're at seven. We play our death toucher. So that's going to block very well on the ground. So we're definitely still in a good position. We're not going to play our land. We're going to hold it in our hand as it is to keep in priority. So our opponent doesn't know what our car is that, that we have in our hand that keeps on holding priority. Um, just double checking, you know, the, the words on that card it has a paragraph of words. They play the run young dragon, but it's not going to be able to block because our dragons can't block. Uh, they think about tacking in with their 3-3, but at this point in the game, I was probably okay with just letting letting myself take it. Uh, as of next turn, I can attack him for five and put him to two. And then they decide to, uh, to to not attack, which is definitely weird. I feel like that's a, that's a misplay on their end, um, just because I feel like they want that advantage. Um, and they let us untap and attack in, which now turns our, uh, our Prowler into a much better creature because now it's a 2-1 Death Toucher that when it dies now, we get to draw a card. So we're definitely in the, the driver's seat in that sense. Um, so it's definitely, I think, a misplay on our opponent. If they would have attacked in and we would have blocked, we wouldn't have drawn a card. Now we draw a card, so we're getting card advantage. We get our big dragon, which is definitely awesome. And I was like too excited to almost like slam it down to sacrifice the treasure. We get a big 7-6, which if this doesn't die we pretty much win the game um just because it's going to give us more than enough damage in the air to finish off our opponent they have a containment which is unfortunate this is the first time i actually played the dragon in all of this i, I think prior to this i discarded it and now they have two dragons and they swing over three so we're both in top deck mode i draw a land i swing over three it brings them to the one um definitely you know one of those things it's not a great position to be in um you know if I, the dragon still lived we would have been much better they have windfall which now they're discarding to dig a little bit deeper in their deck they have a ton of mana they draw two cards and it looks like they found their burn so definitely good for them they found a way to remove something from our side of the battlefield now they swing for six we're down to seven game's really close i draw dragon fire which is good it slows down them slows down their progress so we're not going to die you know in two turns we're going to die in three turns if, at this current clock as long as they don't draw another threat that goes on the battlefield. But we have a ton of mana. We have a ton of cards in hand, technically. And our opponent doesn't have any idea what we have. We play burn. We deal three. We only take three. So we're down to four. And we draw a ghost lantern. So, real quick, while I'm here. So, the, the thing here is, what I did wrong is, I played this the adventure side of ghost lantern. Which essentially allows me to return a creature card from a graveyard to my hand. 
Um, what I should have done, because the autotopper is kind of weird, is I should have sacrificed both treasures to actually cast that side. What would happen in that sense is our dragon that is a treasure currently would go to the graveyard. And then when I search with Ghost Lantern to return some of the back from the graveyard to my hand, I would get my 7-6 dragon, which then is another big threat on the battlefield, which then blocks very well in the air. So definitely one of those things that I should have had done differently um, looking back on this game. And this is kind of like what I probably should have done instead of what I did as it would have also stopped them being able to attack in the air because we've been able to block their their um their their three two with our big seven six in the air so definitely not a smart move by me i did the move of let me get some treasure let me cast the young dragon i'll play the young dragon and then i can hopefully swing in the air next turn as long as they don't have a way to kill my young dragon or kill me so definitely we're in a good spot regardless but it's it's something I noticed that I should have done differently. And it's just the way sometimes the auto tapper uh, taps. And, but yet again, me as a magic player, I should have also been paying attention. They draw a spike trap, which removes our dragon. Um, that surprisingly, thankfully that wouldn't have killed our seven, six. Um, but yet again, it's just a misplay by me. Um, and unfortunately, you know, this is, that's kind of like the last creature I really had. The, the lantern wouldn't have really helped our creature in general, just because the creature would have died in the process. It wasn't like they would have gotten something. Uh, I'm just kind of looking at my deck, just kind of seeing if I have an uh, answer. I end up drawing a dragon fire. So we're both at one. We both have hand cards in our hand. I'm just going to go ahead and just kill it now before, you know, maybe they have an indestructible spell. Um, so definitely, you know, we're, we're, we're just both in top deck mode, but they have cards. I don't know if they have lands or we have lands. So definitely, you know, just going back and forth. Def definitely a different game if I had the seven, six out. Um, so yet again, I top deck lands. I kind of flood. I am only playing 16 lands in this deck. So definitely very surprising. So definitely overall interesting game. And they top deck a, a red dragon, which is going to do four straight up and kill us. Uh, this is our only loss in the game, but still our only loss in the draft. So definitely, uh, awesome. You know, that we still, you know, it was very close, but that one little misplay changed the outcome of this whole, this whole game in that sense. Cause I don't think the game would end it the same way if we had the seven, six. Um, opponent was first. Hands, okay. On the draw, though, so can draw into land. Will this be the game that we cast Brass Dragon? Maybe, though it is a good card to have in hand with Dragonfire that can then do seven damage to something, so definitely not a bad card to have in hand. So we do need that third land would be clutch here. Definitely interesting that it has to pair me up, though, because these are this is someone in, uh, I believe, Diamond... Got our third land. We got black mana out. Next mana is red. Then we have removal open. Playing something Orzov. Probably want to deal with this before they have some sort of fodder. Um. So we'll just we'll just kill it now, just in case they have some protection spell. White has you know the card with indestructible, so might as well have a way to do something with it. Sure. Um, we can visionary here. We could play our two three, which is not bad. Um, gotta get some sort of board press presence here. Make them have something to do with. Uh, make them possibly have to sacrifice something for the ghoul. They're also playing a lot out of their hand. We have we still have good removal overall. So still not bad. I think they have the one mana deal damage to target creature based on how many creatures you do, and it loses its ability perpetually. Awesome. They miss land, which is good for us. Um, I think we we weaponry here. Deal two damage to any target. See if they have a trick. See? Knew they had something, so definitely not bad. We'll, we'll just not attack, because, you know, might as, they played their trick. They got out of the way. They're not going to say go. Looks like they're still mana screwed. I mean, they still have priority stick, so there's something there. I could take their creature. <laughs> um, but I think this is a turn where we put a little pressure on them. We'll swing in. See what they have or don't have. We'll play Imp. Get something that you know if they decide to remove something from the battlefield we get a scry out of it 
or if we sacrifice our treasure, we get a scry. So we definitely, you know, can start fixing the top part of our library. I'm not going to block. You know, I have better pressure on them, so might as well put pressure on them. I feel like they're now just trying to force the issue. Uh, we'll put here. We'll swing in for five. Um... Why not? We'll give it double strike. Maybe we'll get the two-handed axe out at some point. And we'll say go. Just kind of just kind of playing it easy. We could have played the two-handed axe. I mean, I can make him sacrifice it. We can get it. Uh, I'm not really worried. They, they've drawn a lot of cards. Um, that's fine. Uh, I think in this scenario, we uh, we make him sacrifice. So we get a scry out of this. We uh, get one of their cards because they're both... I, well, this is a two drop. This is also a two drop. So we get one of them. Um, that's a fine card to draw. Blocks very well. So we get their their card, which is cool. Uh, they only have two mana, so we'll see if they have something. You know, kind of remove the, the blockage here. They have another one, which is fine. We'll just attack in the air for three. Oh. And we will play our 2-3. Don't want to play the ghoul just yet. And we win. Not a bad game. I guess they drew really bad and got mana flooded. So, unfortunately for them, benefit for us. All right. And that's our first Baldur's Gate draft. I mean, it went fairly well. I mean, our draft deck overall was very good. Um, you know, at first I was a little unsure. Uh, for the most part, but I do think we had a pretty solid base uh, of our main deck here that performed fairly well and pretty consistently. I mean, having multiple copies of things definitely helped. Dragonfire shows why it's the best removal, I would say, in Baldur's Gate overall. Unfortunately, the only time we actually got to play the Brass Dragon, it got turned into a treasure. I, I'm, I'm not over it yet, but it'll be fine. Uh, we walk away with 2,200 gems, six packs, which is definitely awesome. You know, definitely a boost. You know, this is the first big thing I've done on the main account since I actually started back up on it this is literally the first day so six packs 2200 gems uh definitely send ourselves up really good for rotation in that regard we got seven wins today which is also awesome uh we got six packs of Baldur's gate i'm not really holding on to these uh like i would normally for other things i'm just going to open them up i could save them and then get vault progress and all that stuff i'm just going to go ahead and open up now uh just get them out of the way because i don't really have anything in Baldur's gate so not a big deal to me we get some more wild cards don't actually open any wild cards within the rares and mythics um definitely some interesting cards maybe if i decide to d dive into some uh historic brawl these cards could be useful you know like play something around asterin or something or even the planeswalker definitely could be cool or Miriam Sentinel Worm, definitely awesome. But overall, you know, now we're sitting at 261 common cards, 145 uncommons, 10 rares, 17 mythics on the main account, 80% vault progress. And if we do more Baldur's Gate drafts, we'll definitely get more vault progress. Uh, I do enjoy draft, and it's definitely one of those things I would love to do more of on the channel as a whole. So I guess if you like the video, hit that like button, definitely helps out a lot. I know draft is not everyone's, you know, Baldur's Gate's not everyone's favorite, Alchemy's not everyone's favorite, but I think draft in the draft style, it's not that bad as a whole. Uh, if you're new here, you want to know when I post new videos on the channel, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Just want to give a special shout out to the channel members here on my YouTube channel. You can also become a channel member yourself down below the video, hitting that join button. It definitely helps out a lot. And I just appreciate you guys for your support.